Tell us about the significance of this SpaceX launch for your industry. Hi, Tom. Well, we're very excited about it because for, for decades, the space industry was managed and governed by government agencies who, who looked after everything. And what this launch for SpaceX represents is that NASA has basically let SpaceX do the design, development, test, and also manage the launch and treats NASA as a customer. And SpaceX has shown that they can do that at about a quarter of the price of the traditional way of doing it. So we're excited because governments are traditionally very risk averse and that NASA's given some faith in SpaceX and they've, they've delivered on that. And we hope that uh, exacerbates around the rest of the world and to my government as well to give some more faith to commercial companies. And tying into what you said, I mean, what they've proven, SpaceX, is that they can do these things cheaper. They can reuse some of the components. It's more sustainable. It's saving governments money. Are you seeing this? Is this a, a, a platform or at least something that can be replicated in other countries where the space race is heating up, whether that's India or China or Japan? I think so. I mean, SpaceX has got a philosophy to design for cost and to design for simplicity where they can. And we've We've embraced that in, in our own company here. And I think that is a, is a price model and a business model that the space industry has to do to be commercially successful in the future, no matter where they are on the planet. And, and Adam, you know, you, you hear Elon Musk talk about these things, right? Moon colonies, Martian cities as well. I mean, how close are we to actually getting boots on the moon, for example. I mean, the U.S. president saying 2024 is when he wants to see U.S. astronauts uh, in, on the moon again. Is this still a long shot or a real possibility now? I think the time is a long shot, but I think the technology is not a long shot. You know, they, they could easily miss the 2024 date by a couple of years, and it would still be a fantastic opportunity. And I think that the NASA's getting a whole lot of U.S. companies involved in the, in the missions, and they're outsourcing a lot of the risk. So that's fantastic for their industry. They're putting billions of dollars into it. Um, and I also think that SpaceX has got a very good chance to, to send people to Mars in the 2030s, but that really depends on the success of their new Starship vehicle, which they're currently testing. And let's talk a little bit more about uh, of your line of work, too, Adam. At Gilmore Space Technologies, you were a former city trader. You founded this company that develops th these next-generation, small, satellite-capable rockets. Uh, you're also seeing the likes of SpaceX and, and Blue Origin also kind of trying these satellite constellations as well. Do you, do you see that when it comes to the, the low-Earth orbit so side of things, that things are looking a little bit crowded to you? I don't think they're crowded. I mean, space is a big place. There's a lot of um, area up there to put satellites <laughs> in, and we're quite excited about it because these satellites go into a lot of different orbits, and space is not like the Earth where you can just go into space and then go anywhere from space. Um, because you're going so fast, you stick to the same lane, so to speak. So our rocket is designed when these big constellations go up, and they need to be replaced in the ones and twos, we can take them up in the ones and twos to exactly where they want to go. And we see that as a huge multi-billion dollar annual industry. Adam, where is most of the demand coming from for these satellites? Um, mainly in the US, uh, but we have some European uh, companies that are also putting up big constellations. I mean, OneWeb was looking at putting up a whole lot. They went into bankruptcy protection, but I think there's a good chance they will survive and continue on their constellation build. So uh, we're really seeing demand from all over the world, but definitely the United States is leading it.